Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the income tax formula and Form 1040 and its related schedules. Now, I just want to let you know right from the get-go, this is from a 30,000 foot view. So in this session, I will go over the tax formula, but from a grand perspective. And this is what it looks like. And as I go over this formula, I'm going to show you where things go on the actual tax return. So it's very important for a student to know the formula. That's good. And this is the formula. But it's very important to know how everything fits in an actual practice tax return. Why? Because it's going to stick more. So if you could look at the tax return, it's easy to review. Starting with gross income and think of this income tax formula like an income statement, not necessarily, not necessarily an income statement, but like an income statement. And for an income statement, how do we start? We always start with revenues or income. For tax purposes, it's called gross income. Now, let's talk about gross income. We're going to have a whole chapter about many subchapters about gross income. What is gross income? Income, sales, revenues that you generate, that's taxable. Well, what's the most common one for individuals? Your wages, your W-2 wages. You work as an employee, you get paid. So this is the, the, the 1040, and the first section will include income. And this is basically from line one right here, line one, all the way to total income, which is line nine. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now, I blocked the year. And the reason I blocked the year, because if you are looking at this in a separate year than the form, students might say, well, this may not be relevant. I teach you the idea. Now, if this is, if we are in year 2028, well, I would assume the 1040 would look something similar, right? If we are in year 2026, it should look similar. Okay, I'm teaching you the concept. So the first concept is income. The largest portion of income usually wages and salaries. And here you have to attach your W-2. Once we talk about income more specifically, I will show you what a W-2 looks, looks like. You could have interest income. Some of it is tax exempt. Although it's tax exempt, you report it. Some of it is taxable. Dividend, we could have qualified dividend, ordinary dividend, IRA distribution and the taxable amount of it. Any pension and annuity income, the taxable amount of it. Any social security and the taxable amount. Notice these type of revenues, some of them may not be taxable and we'll have a se separate session for each concept of these. Then the taxable portion will go here. Then we'll have a capital gains or loss and we'll have to attach Schedule D. I did not I'm not going to show you Schedule D today. We'll work on that later on. Then we could have other income from Schedule 1, Line 10 because Schedule 1, Line 10 is a lot. So I'm going to show you Schedule 1, Line 10. And basically what is what is capital gain and capital losses is when you sell a capital asset and you have a gain or a loss. That's all what I'm going to say for now. But it says here, other income from Schedule 1, Line 10. So let me show you Schedule 1, Line 10. So this is Schedule 1, Additional Income and Adjustment to Income. We're just going to look at the income for now, additional income. Could you have additional income that's taxable? You could. Taxable refund, alimony received, unemployment compensation, rent or real estate, other income, cancellation of that, gambling income, jury duty, prices and award. Believe me, we're going to go over all of those in separate session. So you could have many other income and total them. Then you're going to go back and put them, put them here on line nine. Then we will have total income, line eight other income. Then we'll have total income. So this is the first portion of the income tax formula income. And again, we're going to have maybe 10 to 13 sub lessons about income. So that's a lot from income. The government says you can deduct certain adjustments. Basically, take your income minus expenses to arrive to something called an important concept in, in taxation, adjusted gross income, or for short, AGI. Or we call AGI any deductions above the line. Now, what are adjustments? So let's take a look at the income tax return and look what at the adjustments. Well, 
you got to your income. Now, let's use numbers. It's easy. It's better to use numbers. Let's assume your total income is happens to be uh, $100,000. Okay, this is total income. Now, adjustment to income from schedule one, from schedule one, line 26. Let's see what, what adjustments are. So notice this is schedule one. We list on it additional income and adjustments. Now, back, back in the old days, so again, just to kind of give you an idea that tax form could change. The adjustments were on the on the 1040. So the adjustments were listed actually here. Now we, we, we list them separately. The idea is the same. So in a different year, if they change back the, the, if they switch the form, it doesn't matter. What matters is the concept, the idea of adjustments, the idea of adjustments. So what type of adjustments could a taxpayer have? And we're going to have a separate recordings about this education educator expenses certain business expenses of reverse uh, reservist health savings account move and expense for the armed forces self-employment sap uh, simple plan penalty on early withdrawal alimony paid uh, ira deduction student loan interest and many other adjustments i'm not going to go over them so you add them up and let's assume our adjustments happens to be i don't know um five thousand dollar 100 minus 5,000, we deduct the adjustments, we come up to something called adjusted gross income, 95,000. And this is our adjusted gross income that happens to be 91,000. So we said income 100,000, we have adjustments of five. This is an important number for in tax because a lot of deductions, a lot of phase outs are based on something called AGI. And any deduction above AGI, it's called above the line deduction to arrive to AGI. Now, after you get to AGI, you have two options. You can either deduct another deduction, your standard deduction or itemized deduction. What is a standard deduction? Let's start with a standard deduction. Standard deduction is a number given to you by the government, just a number. And for the, for the purpose of this recording, the standard deductions happens to be uh, I don't know, for single individual, 12250 Now, from this, you're going to know what year this tax return is, if you'd like to, but I blocked the year on purpose. So to tell you, this will change. This will change. Okay? And actually, you can find out what year, but it doesn't matter. The point is, it does not matter. The, the, what matters is the idea of you have a standard deduction. Again, in a different year, this could be a different number for single. Let's assume this individual is single. We have a deduction, standard deduction. We're going to take the standard deduction of 12000 550. So we said we have a choice. We could either use the standard deduction or the itemized deduction. Now, what are the itemized deduction? The itemized deduction is a list of deduction that goes on something called Schedule A. So what are the itemized deduction? Well, this is Schedule A, itemized deduction. And again, we're going to have many few lessons about Schedule A. What you do is you add up your medical and dental expenses subject to some limitation, and you'll have a number here. Taxes you paid, state and local taxes, other taxes state and local real estate taxes then you'll have a total here interest you paid certain interest is deductible usually home mortgage interest you'll have it you will have a number here gifts to charity you'll have a number here casualty and theft losses if applicable you have a number here then you add them and if your total itemized deductions are greater than 12550 for this particular year that we are discussing because this was given by the government if this total is greater than 12550 let's assume it's 15000 you are better off choosing your itemized deduction because it's a greater than what the government is giving you if it's less obviously you would use the lower amount because the lower amount uh, I'm sorry if, if, it, if, if it's less, you would use the number given by the government. So for the sake of this illustration, we're going to use the standard deduction. So after you, after you arrive to 95,000, you can deduct 12,550, uh, happens to be that year. So we're not using the itemized deduction, it's or. Then you can deduct qualified business income. We're going to assume you have no business. We keep, we're keeping everything simple because qualified business income is a one Two, one or two, one or two chapters by themselves. Lectures. Now I need, I need my calculator to figure out what is my taxable income. So I have ninety-five thousand AGI minus twelve thousand five fifty. I'm gonna come up with eighty-two thousand. My taxable income is eighty-two thousand four hundred and fifty. Okay. Now let me show you on the form. So here I have my taxable income, eighty-two thousand four fifty. This is my taxable income. Now. I'm going to go from my taxable income and now compute my tax. 
Now notice you go from taxable income, then you have to compute your tax. Well, that's going to depend on your tax rate, and we're going to have a separate recording showing you how to compute your taxes times some rate. Okay, for the sake of this illustration, just to keep things simple, just you know, I'm going to assume it's 23%. Uh, this is not even real, just to kind of just to make up a number. So your taxes will be $8,963. I'm just going to put 63, not 60, 63.50. Now I'm going to come up to your gross income tax liability. Well, we said, sorry, the rate is 23. So the, the gross income tax liability is 18,963. And I multiply this by the rate. It's not that simple. The rate is not flat 23%. There's a way to get to it. I'm just I'm just making up numbers to keep going. Now your gross income tax liability is 18,963. We can say this is what you are responsible for unless you have what we called tax credits. Now before we talk about tax credit, I want to let you know that standard deduction, anything that's the standard deduction is a deduction below AGI. Notice it's below AGI. And all itemized deductions or itemized deductions are below the line, below AGI. Notice it's below AGI. So sometimes you have to differentiate whether this deduction is above the line or below the line. What's the line? The line is AGI adjusted gross income. Now let's go to our credit. You could have many, many credit. I am not going to show you all the credit, but you could have many credit, child tax credit. There's a whole form for different type of credit. And we're going to have separate recordings about these credit, earned income credit, so on and so forth. Now, from those credits and the difference, the good thing about credit is they reduce your taxable income dollar for dollar. And let's assume you have $2,000 in tax credit. Notice the $2,000 in tax credit would reduce your taxes by $2,000. That's it, tax credit. So now we have you, now you are responsible for 18963. Now this is what you are responsible for. Now we'll compare this number to, to what you already paid, what you already either paid or taken from your W2. Let's assume what you are already taxes paid directly to the government or deducted from your W2 is 20,000. If that's the case, then you have a refund because you paid 20,000 and you're responsible for 16963. 20,000 minus 16,963. And that's going to give you $3,037. $3,037. That's a refund. Let's assume you only paid, rather than 20,000, you only paid from your W-2 of 15,000. Well, guess what? You paid 15,000. You're responsible for 16,000. 16,963 minus 15,000. I hope I did not make any math error you are responsible to paying 1,963. You also might be subject to a penalty at this point, who knows, depending on many factors, which we'll talk about later. But this is basically an overview of the income tax formula from, again, from what type of view? 30,000 view. Now you understand what I meant by 30,000 view. Now embrace yourself. I'm gonna go over the whole form, not line by line, to a degree line by line, showing you how everything how everything is computed, um, how, how do we come up with everything, and I'm going to try my best, again, I'm going to try my best, I promise my best, to use forms, so this way you can see the numbers, you can see the concept, but you can see the form. Once again, the risk with the form is once you see someone the form and they saw they see a different here, like, oh, this may not be relevant, not at all. The idea is the same, the numbers might change, you could have also changes to the form itself, but the concept is the same. What should, you do now? what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and start to take multiple choice, true, false, look at additional lectures, exercises that's going to help you, whether you are a CPA candidate or an enrolled agent candidate. The income tax formula, understanding the basic concept is extremely important. Good luck, everyone. Study hard. I'm always here for you and stay safe.